Hello friends, James Stevenson here to talk about Tesla's next 12 months earnings per share. I created a new chart this morning and tweeted out a short thread in which I confused a bunch of people by changing to a different metric that I haven't used before. I think people are used to seeing charts uh, from me and others where the label is showing you the activity that happened during that quarter, or in the case of the 12 trailing month chart, telling you what happened in that quarter, plus the three quarters that came immediately before it. I decided to switch things up and keep everybody on their toes with a different kind of uh, chart, a next 12 months chart. So let me clear up my secondary monitor so that I can show it to you. Behold my glorious 70 inch 4K second display with these four sexy vehicles on it. All right, uh, well, we can't look at my uh, background uh, photo all day. Let's bring up uh, this thread. So I'll click on the first tweet of the thread and go through uh, the description of it that I put for it. Fresh chart showing Tesla next 12 months earnings per share growth over the past three years, plus my latest unpublished forecast. And then you can see there's a, an X axis labeled on here, but I confused people with it because they're, everybody knows we're in 2022 now, and this chart ends with 2021, and I'm talking about a forecast. So already I, I have lost a bunch of people. I tried to say to orient you, the most recently reported four quarters, including Q1 of 2022, of actuals total $9.07, uh, that's this number here, and are shown above the Q1 2021 label on the x-axis because it's next 12 months basis. So you're allowed to do this. I don't do it very often, but next 12 months, Either the stock market is forward-looking or it's not. It ought to be forward-looking. The stock market should not care about what has happened in the past. It should care about what earnings companies are going to generate in the future. Um, now, it shouldn't be limited to only the next 12 months, but the next 12 months ought to be an important element in what you're buying when you buy a stock, right? So uh, this chart is showing for each of these dots, I'll, I'll give you a different example. So for 2020 Q4, the next 12 months are full year 2021. So this $6 and change is what Tesla reported for full year 2021. That's what happened over the next 12 months. And that's why these three are large circles for a forecast instead of small dots, which is what the actuals do. So you can see plenty of growth here in their earnings per share over the past few years and more growth expected after a short hiatus. Uh, so Q2 will be uh, a greater next 12 months uh, earnings per share because Q2 of 2022 will have more non-GAAP earnings than Q2 of 2021 had. And I'll keep going with the thread and come back to that point later. This chart ends with my full year forecast for 2022 of $17.19 EPS as reported, including $1.35 of one-time tax benefit, so adjusted EPS of $15.84. What am I talking about there? I'm still talking about the same chart. I'm talking about this $17. Uh, so for Q4 2021, this forecast is showing you what happens over the next 12 months, over full year 2022 this year. I'm expecting $17 as reported, or knock $1.35 off this to exclude the one-time tax benefit from prior year's losses that I'm forecasting to happen in that quarter, because Tesla might not report it there, in which case uh, it'll be lower by that $1.35 or something close to it. 
or uh, even if Tesla does report it in that quarter where I expect they will, Wall Street will adjust that number out. So the adjusted EPS will be less than $16 if I get, uh, if my forecast is exactly right, which of course it never is. The first rule of forecasting is whatever you forecast, it will be wrong, which can be a, a frustrating or a liberating realization for one who forecasts publicly on Twitter. All right, what's next in this thread? Next I say, here's what that looks like. Oh, what did I say? I said, and then I expect EPS to roughly double again in 2023. So then I have to include that on the next chart by adding another year to the chart. So here's what it looks like if you add another four quarters of forecast onto the three that were on the original chart that I put in they go up and up and up some more, right? Notice how the more growth there is recently in raw dollar terms, the smaller the prior year's growth looks in comparison. This is one of the ways linear charts can fool you. So what am I saying here? I'm saying, hey, these don't look like they're very big increases back here in 2019, 2020. They really were though, they were big in percentage terms. So year over year, they were big. They just weren't as big as these dollar increases are, you know, five bucks at a time worth of jumps here. Y you can do that when you're up above, you know, 20 bucks. Uh, it's really hard to do that when you're down here in the one or two dollar territory, right? So there's a different way of visualizing this same data, which I show in the next tweet. Here's the same exact chart, but with the y-axis in logarithmic base two scale. Hypergrowth company at work, just a brief Q2 pause for Shanghai lockdowns, new factories ramping, layoff restructuring, Bitcoin impairment, then right back to pummeling Wall Street EPS expectations. So uh, some of these are less than a dollar, so they don't even appear on the chart. Uh, on a log chart, you cannot put a negative number on a log chart. It doesn't work that way. Um, but uh, yeah, check it out. The, the slope here stays pretty consistent. And I'm not forecasting very aggressively. The, the law of large numbers comes into play here, um, by, by which I mean growing from a, a dollar per share to $2 per share to $3 per share, not all that difficult. But once you get past these, now you're talking about $64 per share, $128 per share, right? With just the next line of doubling, you can see on, on the log scale base two, every one of these lines is double the one below it, right? So it gets to a point where it's really hard to maintain this logarithmic slope that Tesla has been advancing at. Now, maybe they'll keep it up longer than I think they can. Uh, but what I'm forecasting is still plenty of uh, revenue and earnings growth for Tesla. So let me quickly bring up my Tesla earnings projection model. And if you're viewing this on a phone right now, I'm very sorry that uh, you're not going to be able to see anything on here. But if you're viewing this YouTube video on a 4K television, you can see it exactly as well as I can. And hopefully if you're watching it on a high def television, you can still see it about as well as I do. I don't think it's gonna be way too small. So just to orient you, this is the income statement portion of my detailed earnings forecast. And here is the next quarter Tesla will report Q2 of 2022 here in the U column. So you can see the revenues that I'm forecasting for Tesla here, the costs of sales, the gross margin, some below the line expenses. So I'm forecasting $83 million worth of restructuring another. This is where the layoffs are gonna hit as well as the uh, Bitcoin impairment. And you've got some interest income, other expenses, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and there's the gap earnings, which is as Tesla reports. Then down the page a little further, I've got the non-gap earnings. So 
two and a half billion dollars is what I expect. That's a decrease sequentially from the prior quarter when there were three point seven billion dollars worth of non gap earnings. Uh, but it's an increase versus almost any quarter that came before it. <laughs> so it's it's less than the three quarters uh, or the two quarters that came before it. But uh, I expect a return to record breaking numbers very quickly and for these numbers to accelerate off into the distance. So there's the earnings and here's the EPS, so $2.14 worth of EPS against a prior year $1.44. So that's 70 cents more. I think I said 60 cents in the thread. I should probably go correct that um, as if anyone cares what I'm forecasting. But uh, yeah, here is the next 12 months non gap EPS. Why do I have this number here at all? Well, it was for calculating the price to earnings to growth ratio, the PEG ratio. Um, so this is a cool metric to use if you're trying to evaluate a, a growth company. Um, if you're trying to buy into a hyper growth company, how do you know how, how, how long and how far off into the future the earnings are going to grow and how much you're going to get in terms of earnings for how much you're going to pay in terms of price per share. So you want to compare that earnings growth rate, which is the G in that formula. You can see Tesla had some really nutty numbers back here, back when they were growing from two cents or zero cents uh, to a much higher number the following year. That really gives you crazy looking growth numbers these seem to have settled down to only about 100%, 150% year over year earnings growth. So uh, that's one of the numbers you need for that calculation. Then you've got your PE ratio, which you can calculate a couple of different ways. One of them is by non gap earnings, one of them is by gap earnings. And then you've got a PE ratio versus your next 12 months gap earnings, which you can see uh, the numbers for happening up here. Then the PEG ratio, the last 12 months PE divided by the next 12 months growth rate. So here's how much we expect Tesla to grow by, and here's the PE ratio. If this number is below one, uh, that's a good situation to buy, yeah, according to Peter Lynch, uh, who was a pretty good investor for a very long time. So uh, here are the price targets that you could expect Peter Lynch to give you for a share if he believed it would earn at the rate that I'm forecasting Tesla will earn. That's what this row is good for. All right, that's probably more information than I wanted to uh, go through on this, but I hope you've enjoyed this video today on Tesla earnings growth, which I think is gonna be uh, a, a power to behold over the next year or two. If you've enjoyed this video, click the like button. If you're not subscribed to my channel already, why not subscribe uh, or, or not, it's your life. And uh, I will see you in the next one.